Welcome to Prime Life. We call it Retirement 2.0. Leave each episode with tips and new ideas to help you navigate retirement in our new age. It's your time. Make it count. This podcast is for educational purposes only. It is not intended as medical, investment, or financial advice. We do not sponsor or endorse any of the individuals, companies, products, or services featured on this podcast. Any statements or opinions expressed are of the individual who makes them. We hope you enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Prime Life Podcast. How is everyone doing today? Joseph? Fabulous. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing well. It is uh, a Monday that we're recording on today. So I'm coming back from a restful and enjoyable weekend. So one cannot complain. Good deal. Absolutely. Mary, how are you doing today? I'm going to sort of borrow Joseph's fabulous. (laughs) (laughs) I'll change it up for a change. I know. I love it. Well, I'm excited for our conversation here today with our guest. I think it's going to be very insightful in a number of different ways. So Mary, I will lead it to you to have the introduction. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I'm super excited to have with us today, Kelly Springer. She's the owner of Kelly's Choice LLC. Her vision is to educate others with her knowledge of nutrition through real people and real food. She does this work through uh, workplace wellness events, TV publications, and she partners with Healthy, a multi-generational online platform that makes it easy for everyone to learn about nutrition. Kelly, tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey, and uh, you know what is your passion uh, in this work? Well, thank you everyone for having me on today on this wonderful Monday morning, this fabulous Monday morning. Um, So it's been a very interesting road for me. I was very fortunate to have an aunt, my dad's youngest sister, um, who was a dietitian. And so I got to see that she was able to use her degree with her family and then also to help people externally. And I truly have put that to the test. So I now have two teenage daughters who I'm so proud, knock on wood, eat extremely healthy and really put food first. And I also am able to work with people from all over the world. So I have a true passion for nutrition education and health education as a whole, because I feel that if people truly have the education they will make now, we've talked about it in a number of ways. We've seen it change over the years here. But you mentioned education. And a lot of what we do is hope to educate, bring people on to share their their facts, their stories, their information, um, to bring forward the, the society on the topic and information. What have you seen as one of the best ways to educate people? And has that changed over the last few years? I believe that it has. So when I first started in nutrition, most of the nutrition jobs were clinical jobs. And those jobs are you're going into the hospital, you're passing out a handout. So say they have diverticulitis, here's your handout. They don't, it's not an appropriate time for education. They are sick. They don't feel well. There's doctors, nurses, people coming into the room. It's not a great time for education. And then even when I started my private practice about 12 years ago, I was still in that like, let's get them in, get them out situation. And I was just dumping that uh, education at them. And it was too much. It was overwhelming. So over the years, with help from tons of different interns, and I have Molly sitting across me right now, one of my interns, and through the help with Cindy DeBold, my mentor, and all these different people and patients that came to see me, I was able to kind of transform the way that we deliver education. So now it's very important to give small bits of information over a series of time with goal setting each week so that people can actually achieve what we're putting in front of them and be able to come back and ask questions because life happens, right? There's going to be a grandchild's birthday party. There's going to be a retirement party. There's going to be 
a funeral. There's going to be all different things that happen. And so what do you, how do you navigate that? How do you navigate the stress of that or the happiness of that? And so food is such a part of our society that they really need to be able to come back and say, this was easy. This was hard. This is how we're going to learn about carbohydrates, about proteins and fats and set those goals. So we've really transformed the way that we're delivering education. A bunch of folks on the show in the past who've spoken about the science of longevity and nutrition is obviously uh, a piece of that. Uh, I personally eat a very healthy lifestyle, so I'm a big fan of uh, this topic. Can you maybe shed a little light on, you know, A, is it ever too late to start? And B, like, what are some things that people should be thinking about it as it relates to their overall health and, you know, potential to live longer, healthier lives? I love that you said the word, is it ever too late? So just recently, I have this amazing couple. They're both retired. Um, He was actually a corrections officer, which is interesting. So very stressful type of job. And over that series of, you know, decades, they developed a lot of chronic disease. So he was dealing with a fatty liver disease issue with type 2 diabetes. She was dealing with high blood pressure, obesity, and they are now... um, in their mid fifties by working with us and taking this program, the working with the transformation program, they have lost collectively over 150 pounds. He has reversed his fatty liver disease. And just so you understand how important that is because he was on a $2,000 a month medication that he is now off of. So when we talk about the return on investment for insurance companies, for that person, the quality of life, they have energy. They're walking. They're they're they are walking billboard. Really, people are coming up to them, and I always say it's the ripple effect, right? And what they learned was that it's never too late. And they just said, "We wish we knew you existed years ago." And so I think it's just an interesting situation of you know where they are in life, and now they have grandchildren. They are retired. And they're happy, the smiles on their faces and just how much better That's they feel. That's a great feel. story. Love hearing it. And and it's you're right, it's never too late. And and Kelly, you know, I think I shared with you in our intro call, I started my career in the health and wellness arena. My husband and I owned a and um, we also did nutritional counseling and all of that. Most of our clients at the time were were actually older. Um, and it was interesting because uh You know, like with exercise, you get people involved and, you know, you work with them and you hope that they're going to stick with it because, you know, one and done, there are a lot of stories out there. There are a lot of programs that, you know, promise folks results and and they achieve it in the short term. But then life happens, as you indicated earlier, all the different life events that, you know, happens and then it kind of takes people off track. So can you share with our audience a little bit about how your program is different perhaps than some other programs out there and you know how you deal with your clients in terms of ensuring that like the couple you mentioned that they will, you know, do the best they can to stick with the great results that they've achieved so they can live longer and healthier. So I, again, going back to how we used to do things of, you know, get them in, get them out, because honestly, I felt bad. I'm not a business person. And I'm like, they're paying for the service. So I want to give them all the information up, you know, all at once. And so now with changing it, we have around the clock care. And I think that's a big difference. So what I mean by that is, They come in for that visit. We give them the materials. And now that we have partnered with this um, company called Healthy, Healthy is an online app and also can be um, accessible through your computer too. But on that app, everything is there from the documents that we went over, all the PowerPoints, the handouts on everything from high fiber, how to put it together. There's meal plans. But one of the biggest things that's on there is that we have a chat feature to a registered dietitian. So in between those visits, they can reach out to a dietitian for that complete care. 
Plus, their goals are set there so they can check off to make sure they're doing it. You can take pictures of your food and have interaction with the dietitian. You can do the exercise. So there's so much around the clock care in between those visits to keep people on track. And even if they haven't seen a dietitian in over a year, they, they had their visits and they've kind of moved on, we never kick them off. So anytime that they want to come back and start food journaling, keep getting their exercise, look at those materials again, they're there for them. Again, it's all about that education and that support. So how much of this journey is a combination of education, support, and willpower of the person? And we'll get that answer after a brief word from our commercial sponsors. NASA is always working harder to be your carrier of choice. We offer insurance products that can help you meet your retirement goals, such as protecting your savings, securing lifetime income, or paying for health care costs. We're dedicated to providing best-in-class service and are keeping things simple, and we'll have your back. We have around 400,000 policyholders and contract holders and have been doing this for a long time, 170 years but we remain humble enough to always try to improve. For more information, visit nfg.com. NASA insurance products are issued by NASA Life and Annuity Company of Hartford, Connecticut. NASA Life Insurance Company, East Greenbush, New York, or NASA Life Insurance Company of Kansas, Overland Park, Kansas. Subsidiaries of NASA Financial Group, products are not available in all areas. Policyholder counts are for all NASA companies as of September 30th, 2022, and are subject to change. Coverite is the first digital concierge health insurance platform focused on Medicare. Their mission is to make Medicare more transparent and accessible for America's 60 million Medicare beneficiaries. By simplifying a traditionally confusing and complex decision, Coverite delivers a simple, seamless, and hassle-free plan selection and enrollment experience. Try the Coverite platform and see for yourself why they've been referred to as the TurboTax for Medicare. Visit Coverite.com slash podcast to learn more. That is a great question. And that's why I love private practice because people truly are coming to us because they want to be here. It is their choice. We are not forcing them. And that was a thing too. Like in the hospital, I was Mary Sunshine, like walking into the room and they're like, girl, we don't, <laughs> we, we didn't ask for you. Um, now they are here because they want to be. And usually I've got to say, 90% of our clients are doctor referred. So the doctor has said something has gone wrong. We need you to see the dietitian. But we call and truly go over all the information. At that moment, they have the right to say, no, thank you. This is not the time for me. So I think the fact that they're coming to us because they want to be here is a big difference. I feel like that, um, you know, the stages of change, that they are truly moving towards that change. But also, even if they're at the lower stages, we're walking them through saying, believe me, it's going to be okay. And by week three, I'm like, aren't you glad you did this? And they're like, this is the best because they're having fun. They're learning. They're putting it into practice and they're seeing the results. And so that's where usually, you know, by week six, I'm like, what did you think? And they're like, I just want to keep coming. <laughs> so it's been really amazing to see um, the difference of, you know, that first visit, they really are a little bit afraid. They think we're going to be the food police. They think that there's going to be a lot of things taken away from them. And once they find out that that's not how we operate, it's truly about like putting forth what should you eat and how should we go about this? It's not about restriction and it's not about- I love the education away. piece. I, I work in the various educational businesses and uh, listening to you, I'm thinking of the old commercial, you know, educated consumer is our best customer. So, you know, these people are somewhat yes. self-selecting, right? They're joining this program. Uh, yeah, the TV is our, is probably your worst enemy, right? With all these quick fixes, diet pills and supplements and things that may or may not be helpful. So what advice or suggestions do you have for people listening to this as it relates to, you know, the quick fix, the silver bullet, call you what you want versus, you know, doing the hard work and, and learning? Well, we just did an entire little mini video blog on this because we are seeing a lot of the weight loss drugs are coming out now. 
So our stance on that is basically you have to do what you feel is right with your own physician, but we are here to give you the support in between or after you come off of that. So we're, we can't take the stance that, no, that's horrible. You're killing yourself. I'm not ever going to take that stance. And that's where we have to, right? We have to reach people where they are. And so, and that's true in everything. So I, I think my empathy came because I worked in bariatrics for three years. And for people watching this that don't know what that is, it is uh, a weight loss surgery. So both on um, the bariatric sur- surgery, the lap band surgery, and now the sleeve. And so I was able to hear stories and the pain people had been through and why they'd gotten to that point. And it really, there's a lot there. So again, reaching people where they are at and my goal of health, not necessarily weight, it's truly always about health. And usually we see always weight loss as a result. But when we try to really, truly meet them where they're at, so even if they're taking, you know, some type of weight loss drug, we can educate so that when they're off that drug or in between that drug, we can keep them so that they're not yo-yo dieting back. Kelly, what are like the top, you know, two or three trends that you've seen, especially with, you know, again, the 55 plus audience in terms of, uh, you know, why they're seeking your assistance? You know, what what's going on here? Are you seeing, and, and I know you, you mentioned how educating has changed over, you know, time, but what are the trends are, that you're seeing in terms of the needs of That's an interesting question because we are seeing a lot of digestive issues, a lot of digestive issues from Crohn's colitis, diverticulitis, celiac, gluten intolerance. Um, So the statistic is right now that 70% of Americans have a digestive issue, and that is directly correlated to diet. And it's very interesting of what we learned 20 years ago versus today and how much more education we have on the digestive tract and how much we're able to even help things like IBS. So we're working with the GI physicians to truly give that education so that we can help the digestive issues. But also we see a huge prevalence in the metabolic syndrome, which is type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. They are all related and they are all 80% preventable through diet. So this is where when we're saying it's never too late, I promise you it's never too late. And those three are going to cause major issues. So this past year, I joined the American Heart Association board to really bring light to why people are why that's the number one killer of both men and women across the U.S. is because of that metabolic syndrome. There's a lot more than just salt. It's a lot more about the diet as a whole and understanding and educating about that. But this is where we're seeing everything from those chronic diseases to the digestive issues. But almost all of them, I'd say 98% of it is diet Can I just jump in quickly and ask you, what do you think um, the role that processed food has placed in that just with, I think there's more, I could be wrong. I think there's more processed food now more than ever that may or may not be true, but do you have a, like, what's your thought about that? Well, in the way of the word process, I want to use more the word refined. So because you can process meat, you can process the different things. And I think I want to talk about more of the refined foods. So this is where most Americans don't understand the difference. So when we're talking about that from a nutrition standpoint, we're talking about a grain, basically. And if the grain has been stripped of its nutrients, of its bran and its germ, that means you're losing nutrients, vitamins, and fiber. And anyone who knows me knows that fiber is my favorite word. <laughs> it's, it's like if I could get Americans to eat more fiber, all the chronic diseases I just mentioned earlier would really, truly diminish. And so when we have refined foods, we've removed that fiber and you just basically have a carbohydrate source, which is causing a lot of inflammation in the body, which causes more cholesterol, which causes the high blood pressure. So this is where that trifecta. So you are correct. It's the fact that we're changing the natural state of our food um, is eliminating that fiber source. And most Americans are living on just that simple, simple carbohydrate. So I'll piggyback on that, um, using your favorite word. 
what's some adv- what's some advice to get more fiber out there and, and get it into people's uh, systems? <laughs> I think that's a fantastic question because when I do worksite wellness and I go into all these different places and I ask the group, and it could be all ages that are there, and I say, what foods contain fiber? Crickets. Crickets. So this is where, again, going back to education, understanding what are we saying? And that's where as dietitians and health professionals, I think we've said these words, but no one knows what we're saying. <laughs> like simple carbohydrates are complex. That was never explained. So fiber rich sources, the number one source of fiber really truly comes from beans. Beans, there's so many variety of beans. There's something crazy, like 72 different variety of beans just in our American grocery stores. And there's even more varieties throughout the entire world. But beans have such a high fiber content that just getting half a cup of beans at meals would give you, um, my goal is to get between five to 10 grams of fiber per meal, and that will hit every single time. So mixing it up between the black beans and kidney beans and white beans and Catalini beans, um, they are a food that's been eaten every single culture around the world from the start of time. And so I think there's something to be said about that. So don't listen to anyone on Instagram that says beans are bad for you. (laughs) They are fantastic. And then also your fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. So again, the mixture of these different types of fiber sources. Now I have to ask, um, what's your favorite bean? My favorite bean... I like mixing it up. I truly like, I love chili. I live in central New York. So the majority of the months that are here are freezing. Um, I don't know why we live here, but we do. And so I love a good chili where it's a mixture of all different forms of beans. That to me is absolutely delicious or like a three bean salad. Um, but I love hummus. I love uh, Catalini beans. My husband's Italian and Russian. So we have like. a lot of interesting foods uh, in our house. <laughs> so I have a question. You were sort of <laughs> yes. talking about you know digestion. <laughs> I know there's been a lot of science around the gut biome. I don't know if you have any, have any thoughts. I mean, I'm also a big fan of fermented food. So what are your thoughts about that? So I was lucky or unlucky, however you want to take this. I think it's more lucky. Lucky for me, not lucky for my daughter. Um, When she was five years old, she was diagnosed with an overgrowth of bacteria. And I had no idea what that was. My husband's a surgeon and we both were kind of in the dark. So this is 11 years ago. She celebrates her 16th birthday next month. Um, And we were very fortunate to have a resident who understood the gut biome in such a way that he had just studied it in school, was under a fellowship. Like It was one of those things that just happened to be. So because of that situation, I was able to dive deeper into integrative nutrition, learn more about the gut biome, how does it work, and got really curious. And so over these 11 years, um, we have learned so much about what goes on there and how it affects every single part of your body, from bone health to mental health. Um, And so this is where when companies will say to me, well, we're really focusing on mental health, not nutrition. And I'm like, you do realize that if you don't have the proper nutrition, my favorite word, fiber, in your diet, you cannot make serotonin, which is your happiness transmitter, which is going to lead to a lot of anxiety and depression and other mental health illnesses. So every single thing in our body, we have to work together with those gut bacteria. There's a hundred trillion billion of them. I mean, there's so many, and we have to truly work with them in this synergistic effect to make sure that we are healthy. Kelly, what do you think, uh, can you give the audience a couple of key takeaways uh, from, you know, the nutrition and health? So if I were coming into you um, and thinking like, okay, maybe I think I need to shore my diet up, or maybe I need to, you know, exercise more, or maybe I need to really look at what I'm taking in because I want to lose weight, or I just want to look healthier and have more energy to, you know, decide what I want to do next in my life? Like what kind of, uh, what would you say to them? Well, it's very interesting. I was talking to my daughter graduated this weekend. So all these people are in town and my mom's sorority sister there, I think they're around 72 years old. And she goes, she's from West Virginia, our alma mater. And she says, Kelly, I just can't lose weight. 
And I was like, Deb, you know what? I said, how many days of your life have been spent focusing on foods and trying to lose weight and going in this direction? I said, I have some simple, simple tips for you. And I said, you know, the number one thing I would tell you is half plate healthy. Make half your plate vegetables. And you can mix it up. You can have like last night I showed her, we were, you know, at our camp having, you know, some burgers and things like that. But half the plate was salad and asparagus. I said, if you can get half your plate coming from vegetables, it's going to fill you up. It's going to give you those nutrients, those micronutrients, all of those vitamins and minerals, and truly giving you the fiber source. So if you can do just that, one simple thing like that, to making sure you have half your plate coming from vegetables, you can still enjoy the hamburger or whatever is on the other side. So that's one simple tip. The other tip I would give you is the um, hydration is a huge piece. And I can't tell you how many patients of mine are really not great at getting in enough hydration during the day. It's something that we start with almost every single time. So if you can get at least 64 ounces of fluid coming in a day, that's going to help with your digestive tract. It's going to help with controlling hunger. Um, So getting in enough fluids and making sure that those fluids do not contain artificial sweeteners or sugar. Um, This past week, we were actually at the Firefighters Association, and we did this whole beverage um, conversation with people, showing them both the sugar content and things like lemonade and iced tea and sodas, of course, and things like that, but also showing them there was a few drinks that had artificial sweeteners. And so understanding the difference of that you don't want to put chemicals in, but also don't want to get a ton of sugar. So the beverage conversation is pretty big, but trying to get in beverages that do not contain artificial sweeteners or added sugars, at least 64 ounces. And then lastly, the other thing that I would highly, highly stress is making sure you don't skip meals. There's been a lot of intermittent fasting. There's a lot of talk about this. And what happens is when you're skipping meals, there's no way you're going to reach your fiber goals, your protein goals, and your vitamins and minerals. So this doesn't mean that we're starting the day off with fruit loops and then going to here or there. When you eat meals, make it worth it. Make it worth it. So you're always trying to aim for that 15 to you know 30 grams of protein. You're trying to get 5, 10 grams of fiber. So it's like, and this is where it really helps working with a registered dietitian because we can teach you how to do just that that. So Molly, who's sitting across from me right now is an intern from Penn State. We're putting together full-blown lesson plans and meal plans that put that together for people. Because it's hard. If you haven't learned and you don't know how to do that, you weren't raised like that, and you think that Fruit Loops is an actual meal time, then you're not getting the nutrients. You're still missing. Okay. So that's where working with that extra dietitian can help a lot to put that together for you. Seriously? <laughs> you get, uh, you, I, you know, I'm sorry. I burst the bubble, but it's, it's one of those things in America, as Mary was saying, of your <laughs> refined foods. There isn't a lot of nutrients there. And so we're just, again, leading down that road of simple carbohydrates, which is leading to those chronic diseases. So that's why working with a program, understanding how to put these things together, and truly getting that amazing education that you can use for life. So you mentioned hydration. Really important to me. And, you know, I have friends say, if you're not hydrating, you're dehydrating. Um, so where where does caffeine come into the mix? Because you read <laughs> things out there that are, you know, contradictory and sometimes. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you asked. So caffeine, especially in the way of coffee, coffee has a lot of antioxidants. And so this is where I always think these two things kind of go together is the caffeine and the alcohol, right? Caffeine and alcohol. So again, a little bit in moderation can actually be beneficial. When we go more than that can actually hurt our body. So having up to 16 ounces of coffee a day has been proven for most people. I know they're getting into genetics now and seeing, you know, who should have coffee, who should not have coffee. But the general rule right now as we speak, because things are always changing, is 16 ounces of coffee can actually help your digestive tract. It can help to give you those antioxidants. It can help with constipation and things like that as well. So I do have two cups of coffee in the morning and it's been 
fantastic. As you said, you only had the one today, <laughs> but I do have my two cups with doing more than that. I feel the jitteriness. I feel the dehydration. So that's where, and the same with wine. So having a glass of wine can actually help lower blood pressure, things like that. But more than that, then we're getting dehydrated and it is a toxin. So this is where that flexibility between, you know, can you have it? Can you not? And if you really feel a sensitivity to caffeine, then don't have it or sensitivity to alcohol, don't have it um, and feel how you work. But definitely for me, that 16 ounces is exactly enough. I feel good. I feel- um, I'm going like to come to the really defense of wine for a second. It's made from grapes. It's made from grapes. That has fiber. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> um, I have a question about nutrition as you age. So your body changes. You were mentioning earlier, you know, slowing down, people having trouble losing mm -hmm. weight. What should people be thinking about as they age and what should they adjust, right? So, you know, maybe they need more certain nutrition than other and, you know, I'm not sure what, what the answer is there, so. No, that was a great question. So as we age, things do slow down metabolism wise, mostly because we're just not think about in high school, you're, you know, I watch my kids, they're doing two hour practices and they're doing this and that and going to school. And, and we're just not at that level or not moving as much, you know, so we don't need as many calories, but again, goes back to what do those calories consist of? So protein is a big one. As we age, we tend to get less in and we need to make sure that's consistent throughout the day. It's very, very important to have that protein coming in. Now there's this whole push from plant-based or going vegan. Um, I, again, I reach people where they are. So if you want to be vegan, you definitely need to reach out to a dietitian because to make sure you're getting enough protein, which means all the amino acids, making sure you're getting enough of those B vitamins, which is equated to energy. And as we age, we tend to lose our intrinsic factor in our stomach, which helps the absorption of B12. So again, reaching out to a dietitian to understand those um, opportunities, but also understanding that the egg, the incredible egg, which got demonized for decades, um, has B vitamins, has your complete amino acid set. It has your vitamin D, your vitamin E, your fat soluble vitamins. And so this is where, again, understanding how much protein to have, not skipping meals and putting that together. But it really does, as we age, nutrition is even at most important for osteoporosis, for mental health, um, for you know, re decreasing your risk of dementia. Um, so much goes into it that we can really help our bodies as we age. So I know we're coming, you know, to the near the end of our time. And Laura, I'm not going to steal your question that you always ask to finish us off. But I guess I would just like to say, like when you were talking about, you know, all the different foods as you get older, nutrition's even more important. You know, we have we've had guests on talk about sleep the importance of sleep and rest. And again, you hit upon the one about hydration. So, you know, as we sit here sipping our water, are there any particular foods that um, we should be aware of that will help with our sleep? Absolutely. So when we think about, um, you've all heard turkey and melatonin, right? Or tryptophan, that turkey makes you tired. So just so you know, every single animal source of protein is going to have tryptophan, which correlates to our melatonin and our hat, like that sleep um, hormone. So um, because animal protein is complete protein, has all nine essential amino acids, tryptophan is one of them. And so making sure that we have that even protein source, as we talked about, is really important. Um, but things like uh, pumpkin seeds have that great tryptophan, which can really help with that and increasing that melatonin. But really and truly, it goes back to nutrition as a whole. It's not just one thing. It's making sure we have good, healthy meals. It's making sure that we have rest in between meals. And so that's where that whole intermittent fasting came up. We should be resting in between meals. We should, you know, have enough time before the end of the day to have your dinner and have a break. Um, if we have that break, we're able to sleep better at night or not overeating at dinner and making sure we have that. So there's a lot more that kind of goes into it, uh, but sleep is extremely important because if you have that lack of sleep, you're going to try to find 
simple carbohydrates that next day to get that energy back up. So it's interesting of how it correlates to wanting and craving those simple carbohydrates as we have lack of sleep. So as Mary mentioned, we like to save a question towards the end of these episodes. Um, It's my favorite in most cases, but sometimes we get uh, a bit of a surprise. Kelly, you do amazing work and on your website, which we will link in the show notes, you have a whole host of accomplishments, partnerships, the work that you do, where you work, um, and how you're changing people's lives. The testimonies on there are quite powerful. So if that all was not enough, why do you do what you do? Why do you wake up every morning and, and share share this with I just lucked out into the best profession for me. This just fits me like a glove. I love that interaction with people. I am 99% extroverted. And being able to work with people, laugh with people, cry with people, see the change is just so impactful. And it doesn't matter if it's a one-on-one situation with my patient, with my intern, with my daughter who's now going into my profession, or if it's in front of a whole room, I can see that connection to that person and that light bulb turn on. And it's just amazing the feedback that I get, you know, from, from people learning. And even and we now have 17 dietitians nationwide and we'll get testimonials from people that my dietitians have seen too of how much they impacted their lives. And so we get to see it every single day. I don't think a lot of people get that every day, right? That affirmation back. Um, but I do, I get to see it every day and I, I get to hug my patients. I get to see them. I get to have people come up to me after that um, talk that I did and say, you know, that really made sense to me. What you said made sense. I love it. That sounds like and a so dream. That's why Especially I do as people are, are exploring their, their second or their third chapters. You may have inspired people not to only be healthier and, and and check out the services. But who knows, this might be a, a dream that somebody else can uh, realize themselves in as well. So with that, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Joseph, Mary, as always. And for our listeners, please tune in for another episode of the Prime Life Podcast. Thanks so much, everyone. Remember to subscribe to the Prime Life Podcast anywhere you find podcasts. You can find all of our episodes, contact information, and more on our website, primelifepodcast.com. Stay connected with us. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.